Underdog Fantasy is the best and easiest place to play fantasy sports and their pick'em game. Sign up now with Code Poodle to claim your special pick plus a first time deposit offer up to $250 in bonus cash. Hey what's going on everybody it's Poodle back and today we're going to be going over the fastest ways to get XP for your coach in CFB 25. Before I get into this video make sure to give the video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new, and of course, if you need any help, comment down below. This game did a pretty good job of centralizing a lot of the ways you get XP and about the easiest ways you could track, which I think is very helpful, but there are a lot of strategies involved with getting the XP, of course. There's a lot of different ways you can kind of like manipulate it in a way to get a little bit more or kind of little side things you can do to make sure you ensure every year you get it. Now, Coach XP is kind of similar to how players grow. If you haven't seen that video that I posted, make sure to check that out. But a lot of stuff in this game is year long, right? So... Again, unlike Madden, where things are kind of week to week, this is you make, you start recruiting week one, takes a whole year, and then you get your class. You start growing players, it takes a whole year, and at the end of the year, you get the training upgrade. Coaches are kind of the same thing. So you want to go on over to coach and go to coach XP goals. So only, if you look here, there's only one of these that actually apply weekly. So first there's draft goals. Then there's game goals, then there's recruiting goals, then there's stack goals. So game goals is the only one that updates every single week. And as you're playing games, you actually will start to notice it. So you'll throw a touchdown, I'll say pass and touchdown goal hit. It tells you in game that you're accruing XP, which is very nice. So you can kind of look here. This is one of those things that you can just play the game and kind of get these. I don't worry too much about these, but look, first downs is two. All right. Fumbles recovered is 40. Interceptions is 30. Pass deflections is 10. Now, I do want to mention that while these aren't a lot, they do add up. So wins are 100, rival wins 100, so on and so forth, all the way down to national championship 400, which actually I know it sounds like a lot. It's not necessarily if you see other ways you can get XP, but it is a good amount. But in the trade off of trying to win a national championship, it's not, it's not that common, especially if you're playing in online leagues. But these are the ones that actually update as you gain, you earn them. So after a week with a win, you'll get the XP. These are the ones you could track all season long. Could you play and try to like hit these goals specifically? It's it's not going to be that fun. It's going to kind of be annoying. But yes, you could try to boost a little bit and do little things a little extra and try to focus. You like passing or rushing are the same, so you don't have to worry about that. Wins, of course. But now let's move over to the year-long ones. So let's start with draft goals. So players drafted in round one, times completed one. So this is my one-year sim that I did. Times completed one. So it seems like it's only one time per year. So it's like if in that season you had any player drafted in round one, even if it was 10 of them, you successfully got players drafted in round one and you get hit with it once. It's not like if you had five guys go, you get 2,500, right? So it seems like it's one per round two, round three, round four accordingly. So this one's very simple. Just make sure that you're focusing on some guys. Make sure you're trying to hit those goals. And it's not just because of this, but there because there's also coaching packages and other things you can earn by getting guys drafted. So you definitely want to be focusing on that. If you notice that two wide receivers are doing pretty well, one's kind of pulling away, either go all in on that one guy or see if you can try to put up a passing attack that produces two draftable wide receivers. Make sure you're giving enough love to a few guys. And with that being said, let's say you're not a big rusher, right? You're only, you rush maybe like five to 10 times a game. Make sure you're probably using one running back because using two in a split committee like that is probably going to Kill any chance you have of any running back being drafted. And while this goes beyond just obviously, like maybe you get him in the fifth round, maybe a fourth round guy at 175. There's a lot of college football players. It's not the easiest thing to get them drafted. So definitely just make sure you're, this kind of goes back to stat padding. Make sure you're getting stats to your guys because these are big time rewards getting a 500. Even if you get like a one, a three and a four, you're looking at close to a thousand XP just for getting guys drafted as a side, like a side quest. Next, you have recruiting goals. So this is another one that goes year long. Now, this one's pretty cool because there is a way to kind of manipulate this in a sense. So let's say you're a five-star program. You got your, you're getting your five-star prospects. I got three. That's 250. That's 750 XP. That's huge, right? Nothing for four-star, but you do get a three-star bonus and a sign of prospect bonus. This is where sometimes some, I've seen some people go like, oh, I'll get like my 20 recruits. You leave your 15 scholarships on the board. This is where it might be worthwhile at the end of the year, just going in and knocking out your last 10 to 15 scholarships that you haven't used on one star prospects and just getting those quick 25s. If you can get 10 last minute prospects in that are like one or two stars just to fill up depth, you're looking at close to 250 XP just off that. So that's leaving 250 on the board when you don't max out your scholarships at least. And let's say you find some three stars with a five star program, right? It's like an LSU, a Georgia, a Bama, a Texas, 
university. There's so many three stars that you can basically just steal. Like even halfway through the year, towards the end, you can just go in, find a three star that has like mutual to minimal interest and just go in there and give it, give it, give it the all. When you have all those hours coming back after you get some commits, you can easily knock out like 10 three stars last minute. You can knock out five to 10 at least, right? Let's say you do 10, that's 750 on the board that you would have left. So first and foremost, make sure you're getting your scholarships in. Do not leave any scholarships up to chance. Just get them in, even if it's just for depth purposes. And then also start to allocate some funds to three stars near the end of the season. That way you can go in and try to grab some extra points. And then of course there's top class in the country. While honestly getting the extra three stars kind of just makes up for that. 500 is a huge boost. And the way you do that, you can pretty much monitor it on the recruiting screen. You can go to the right, go to the class recruitment. And just look at what the top classes look like. If you get a top class, sign the top class 500. It's pretty hard. Like even in a class where I was doing great, where I felt like I was doing great, there's always a few teams that get some last minute commits. And it's going to be something that you can't really maneuver, manipulate in a sense, like especially in an online league. The next thing is like these top five, top 10, top 25. If you're a top program, you're almost always getting the top 25 unless you don't recruit at all. Top 10 isn't that I don't think that hard. Top five is pretty hard. I just barely scraped through in my sim. Obviously, I could have put a little more effort into it, but it was a sim. But top five class is a bit harder. But these are nice. 250, 150 is not huge. But if you get all of these, you're looking at a lot of XP. And XP is so important, especially when you're going for these recruiting packages and trying to get your way up and building out your players. If you do like a custom league with custom coaches, you're going to want to get from level one to 50 as soon as possible because the quicker you do, the more you're going to start to outweigh and gain advantages over the people you're playing against, right? The last one is stack goals. So B rank number one, 250, not huge, but these are some cool things that you're just, just going to na happen naturally. That's what I like about a lot of these goals. You don't have to aim for them. I feel like there's a nice mix of things that will just occur, things you have to think about, and then things that you can even manipulate to get a little extra. Rank top 10, 40 passing touchdowns, 30 rushing touchdowns. These are essentially like Heisman type seasons that you're going to have with people. So these are just by playing the game, you're going to get these things. Now, this is where it comes into fruition where I said before, where you're not stat padding, but you definitely want to go all in if you want this bracket right here, right? To be top five in rushing touchdowns, you got to be giving it to a guy all game, not splitting too many carries, worrying about wear and tear. To be top one, you pretty much have to have an insane type Heisman season, rank top one in offensive yards, just letting it fly, maybe sacrificing on your defensive yards a little bit. But that pretty much wraps up the goals. So just keep in mind, be watching these weekly. Take a look and just be like, oh yeah, I, I got to take a look at this. Or let me get some three stars in. This is a great way for XP. XP gives you such a huge advantage over other people, especially in this game. Like in Madden, it was a few boosts, some things that you could wait on like you want it, but it's not going to make or break your franchise. This in Dynasty, that coach XP, because of what you can do with these coach abilities, puts you far ahead of everyone else. First, if you're a top program and you all start from scratch, this will get you back into the higher ranks of eliteness quicker than they can get coaching-wise. And if you're a bottom tier program, that will be the difference between signing a decent class and signing like no one at all that's relevant. So definitely want to get the coach XP in. Uh, overall, there's also other things, of course, like as you go throughout the year, you'll see it every week as you uh, advance weeks, you will see it say the bar, your coach XP, you kind of can monitor it that way. Follow these tips. Let me know down below by following this and potentially manipulating a few of them. Are you able to really increase how much you get per year? It's a grind. It's level one to level 50. It takes a while. There's limited points and you want to get them as quickly as possible. But yeah, that's about it. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you're new to the channel, hit that like button, subscribe, comment down below if you need anything. And that's all. I'm out. Peace.